welcome to another installment of Metalhead Central, the show where I take an honest look at the harder side of music and give it an honest rating. Today, we journey down to the land of Vikings, ships, and swords, and all that other stuff to take a look at Amana Marth's new album, Berserker. It was released May 3rd on Metal Blade Records. So did the uh, biggest Viking metal band in the world sink their ships here, or are they sailing on smooth waters? I will say that their boat is firmly entrenched upon the waters of classic melodic death metal, akin to uh, Amorphous during the Tales from the Ten Thousand Lakes era and earlier than that, and uh, older in flames, you know, like stuff like Colony or, or the Jester Race. Now this is something straight out of the streets of Gothenburg, or in this band's case, the frigid northern waters that align themselves along the shores of far northern Sweden. But enough of the boat and water puns. Let's get to the review. This is an insanely good album. I mean, like, really, really good. Let's just get that out of the way right now. It's amazing. Now, I am a proud owner of Twilight of the Thunder God, and I believe this album can stack up to that one in the category of greatest melodic death metal albums of all time. This album was perfectly balanced between catchy as heck choruses and the more aggressive verses that the band is, is well known for. In other words, if you're looking for something different than the Amon Amarth formula, look elsewhere. But if you're into the band or just love albums with catchiness and aggressiveness, you'll dig it. I cannot say enough about the guitar and drum work on here. The riffs are heavy enough to satisfy the diehard metal head, yet restrained enough to please a casual listener. They're just brilliantly done. The twin guitar attack of... Bear with me, I'm going to try and pronounce this. Olavi Mikonen and Johan Soderberg. I think I got that right. It sounds amazing. They're able to weave these riffs in with the more melodic aspects of the album and create a soundscape that is heavy, but it's heavy in all the right areas. Throughout the choruses, they retain that heaviness while incorporating a sense of catchy melody that leaves the listener both entranced and wanting to start a gigantic mosh pit in their bedroom. Or whatever room you listen to this in. The drumming, provided by Jokke Valgren, again, I think I got that right, it's equally amazing. It's hard and blisteringly fast when it needs to be, and it fades into the background when it needs to. It's not overbearing, but it's not too simple either. Again, as with all the instruments on here, it's perfectly balanced. Jokke is an excellent drummer, and this album truly shows that. As I said in my Fallujah review uh, earlier this year, I like it when the drums are treated as an instrument and Jockey treats them that way on here. Now, all the songs are terrific in their own way, but I have to give props to a few in particular. Album opener Fafner's Gold might be one of my favorite album openers of all time. Johan Hegg's vocals rip through the track and they never stop. In fact, on this entire album, his vocals just never stop. Some of the best vocals I've heard. The chorus on this song is catchy as all get out, and it makes you want to go on your own gold hunt, go on your own treasure hunt. It's amazing. The two singles, Crack the Sky and Raven's Flight, are both outstanding tracks. Crack the Sky has a chorus that tones back the melody in favor of being a bit more heavy, but again, it doesn't really sacrifice anything for it. You can still tell that there's that subtle hint of melody that keeps you hooked. The music doesn't go awry, and you gain another very enjoyable moment out of it. Raven's Flight is a bit more melodic without sacrificing the heaviness that the band had employed on the album through the first five tracks. The tone was set on this album from the very first song, and it ran through the entire runtime, just this whole record. When once again we can set our sails, Shield Wall and Into the Dark are all amazing deeper cuts off the album. They retain that balance between heaviness and catchy melody that makes this album so utterly outstanding. The lyrics are also a lot of fun, what with their epic tales of Vikings and their exploits during the Middle Ages. Oh, and Shieldwall? Man, that's one of the bounciest metal songs I've ever heard. It should open the way for a lot of fun jumping moments at the band's concerts. All in all, this is definitely an album of the year contender. I just couldn't really find anything wrong on here. If I had to criticize something, I would say it's it's too short, even at at near an hour runtime, it's too short. I want more Viking epicness! Also, the song The Berserker at Stamford Bridge has, it just left me wanting a little more melody, just a little bit, like the tiniest bit, just a smidge. And that's me being insanely picky because this album was just that good. This was, 
It was just a fun journey through some metal that didn't sacrifice anything for anything. It is the perfect mixture of melody and heaviness, and I love it. I highly, highly recommend it. I'm giving Berserker by Amon Amarth a 99 out of 100 on the YPS scale. Thank you so much for watching. Click like and subscribe for more Metalhead Central, and don't forget to check out the new series, The Metal Artist Review Show. Next week, we're going to be throwing it back to some old school death slash thrash metal. I say that to appease the two sides in the did this band start death metal argument. Yep, for the first time in 33 years, the guys in Possessed are dropping a new album. And that's going to be our topic of discussion next time. You've been watching Metalhead Central where I give honest ratings, two honest music, and I'll see y'all next time.